Hi everybody, this is Julian from Hugging Face. Yesterday I posted a video where I showed you how to very easily train a transformer model on Trainium, a custom training accelerator designed by AWS, thanks to our new uh, Hugging Face Amazon Machine Image, AMI. Okay, and uh, we trained uh, Bert Bayes on a subset of the Yelp uh, review data set, and I promised I would go and scale things up. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to train BERT large uh, at maximum sequence length on the full data set on Trainium. And because everybody loves a benchmark, I'm going to do the same on the largest G5 instance, which comes with eight A10G GPUs. Okay, and we're going to see what happens, right? Let's get to work. First, I launched a TRN132XL instance, which is the largest size. This is the same as I used yesterday. Uh, same setup, uh, same hugging face neuron AMI available on the AWS marketplace. Um, and that's in the Oregon region. And then in the North Virginia region, because I couldn't get... <laughs> A G5, a large G5 instance in Oregon looks like we don't have the quota for it. Um, I so in uh, US East One, I launched a G5 48XL instance with uh, the AWS Deep Learning AMI. Okay, and like I said, this one comes with uh, eight A10G GPUs. Okay, all right. So yeah, no no particular uh, no particular setup here. Uh, just launch the instances. Um, with uh, the appropriate AMIs. And then, of course, uh, we can connect to the instances. So on the left, we have the um, Trainium instance, as we can see, right? And on the right, we have the GPU instance, the G5 instance. Okay, and we can see we have those eight GPUs <clears throat> doing nothing right now, obviously just like uh, the neuron cores themselves are not doing much. Okay, but we're gonna fix that. So on the Trenium side, I'm using the same code um, as I, in the previous video, which is uh, basically uh, a vanilla PyTorch uh, training loop for distributed training. And in the previous video, I used Bird Base and I used, uh, I think 10,000 uh, samples from the Yelp uh, review data set, which uh, is a text classification data set with uh, five labels, one star to five stars, pretty much. So now we're bumping this to BERT large, and we're using the full training set, as you can see here. And although it's still called small, but no, it's the full training set. And I'm also bumping uh, sequence length to 512, which is uh, the maximum that Bert Large can handle, okay? Because some, a lot of those reviews are pretty long, so I wanna take uh, all that text into account, right? So that's really, um, that's really it, the rest is unchanged, okay? So long story short, fine tuning Bert Large on the full review data set and at max sequence length. Okay, so we can't go really bigger with this uh, with this setup, right? Okay, and on the GPU side, I'm actually using the text classification example that comes in the Transformers library, right? So I just clone the repo and uh, and use this. Okay, and I'm gonna run this example here, right? Uh, we can see here. Okay, BERT large, uncased, Yelp review full, max sec length 512. Batch size is 12, which is the largest I could fit. Uh, I try different values, but, uh, but I get out of memory errors uh, when I try to go up. And even using gradient accumulation steps uh, doesn't solve the problem. Okay, so uh, if there's a way to fit more, uh, more data there, uh, it's above my pay grade. As you can see, I'm gonna train in BF16. Um, I could do FP16 as well, but this is as this is a more recent GPU, it does support the BF16 data format. 
which is what uh, Trainium uses by default, right? So when the model is compiled by default, all the all the acceleration uh, features and all the optimization features are enabled for BF16. Okay, um, if you want to, um, so that will optimize for speed pretty much. Uh, if you see accuracy, uh, you know, uh, degradation, you can actually, you know, uh, take it down a notch. There's a, a compiler option uh, for the neuron compiler called Fast Math. Uh, you can look it up in the uh, in the neuron uh, SDK documentation where you can actually, you know, uh, selectively enable uh, some optimizations to find the right balance between speed and accuracy. But here we want to go at full speed. Okay, so I'll just leave everything on by default. And, uh, and yeah, so should be the same, right? Same model, same, same data sets, same sequence length, uh, same, uh, same APIs pretty much, same PyTorch and BF16. All right, so let's just go and run this thing. I ran it before uh, so that we shouldn't see any model compilation happening, fingers crossed. Okay. And let's run this as well. Okay, just double checking the command line. Yeah, it looks okay to me. Uh, here we go. I'm just trying for one epoch because <clears throat> I'm only really interested in the, uh, the the time that it takes to run one epoch. Okay. Of course, for maximum accuracy, you could want to run a little longer. Um, the training job is using the cached version, which means you know the model has already been pre-compiled. And yeah, I don't know if I mentioned it before. It's all stored in var tmp neuron compile cache. So you may actually want to save those, right? Because um, and put them somewhere, maybe I don't know in S3, and reuse them as you go, um, because this will save you a ton of time, obviously. Um, every time you change the, the model or the batch size, um, compilation will happen. So if you get tired of that, you can go and, uh, and back up your compile cache and find a way to bring it back for, uh, for further jobs. Okay. So I just waited for a couple of minutes. Um, and now in, uh, the training instance is actually training. So we can see all 32 cores running, um, pretty much to the max. Uh, it's probably a little tiny here, but device uh, memory is around 27 gigabytes um, uh, out of 32. Again, um, I think the batch size here is four. Uh, I'll, I can double check in the code and I couldn't increase it to uh, without getting out of memory errors. So how are we doing on uh, on training speed? Well, I think you can see, right? We're looking at uh, let's call it 55 minutes um, of um, of training time for a single epoch versus versus five hours on the right. So I'm gonna make a whole lot of friends with this, uh, and that's okay. I can I can use more friends, especially the ones working for GPU companies. Um, but this is really what it is. Um, it's not a handcrafted example. It's um, you know it's out of the box code that I just ran. Um, I'm I'm using one of our vanilla scripts. Uh, you know I did try to tweak the batch size. Uh, I did enable BF16 on the GPU to uh, try to have a you know reference point. Um, and again the the Trainium code as you saw is not you know handcrafted. It's a vanilla training loop um, using the the distributed loader etc cetera, etc. Cetera. So. I'm sure somebody's going to leave a comment saying, oh, I can run the same thing twice faster on my GPU. And, and you know, fair enough. Uh, uh, and just tell me how. Uh, just, tell, just tell me how you do this on G5. Um, but, you know, not being a world expert on, <laughs> on GPU training and, and generally hardware acceleration, I mean, I think this is close enough to the real-life developer experience, right? Uh, anyone out there trying to replicate this should see the same results. Um, and so... You know, what I'm seeing here is literally uh, 5x or maybe even more. Yeah, uh, let's stick to 5. A 5x speed up in favor of Trainium on a really large um, training job, right? So that's pretty so performance is one thing, but obviously we need to look at cost as well. So uh, why don't we do that? Um, the Trainium instance I'm using costs $21.5 uh, per hour, okay? 
on demand. Okay, 2150. And the G5 instance is a little more than 16 bucks. So that's about 30%. Uh, you know, Trinium is about 30% more expensive, but you know, it is 5x faster. So um, so that's that's a no-brainer, right? The, the the cost performance improvement here is is just huge, right? So uh, I would really encourage everybody to uh, again run their own numbers. Uh, and don't always look at training times. Sometimes people ping me and say, oh, I could train this fast on this instance, but yeah, okay, how much did that cost? You know, as a developer, sometimes, you know, you don't care because you're not paying the bills, but your boss and your company are. So uh, from an enterprise perspective, cost performance is what you want to look at. And in this case, uh, it's just very impressive, I think, right? So that's pretty cool. Your mileage will vary if you try different models, different data sets, different task types. Um, I did see uh, less of a difference for shorter sequence length. Uh, I actually tried, you know, like 128, 256, and the, the gap was actually uh, was actually smaller. So, uh, you know, again, not sure why. Um, maybe Trinium is just a little bit more efficient at, uh, you know, loading data, um, you know, versus the loading data on the eight GPUs. I don't know, just just a while, I guess. Maybe maybe there's a bottleneck here that would that could explain why you know we see. Uh, um, we see such a scalability uh, gap when moving to larger sequences. But who knows? Uh, this would warrant a deeper investigation. Happy to continue the conversation in the comments, okay? And if you train on GPUs, and particularly if you train on G5, uh, you know, I mean, it's just me. I would highly recommend that you give Trainium a shot. Uh, I think you could have a very nice surprise, okay? Well, that's really it for today. Um, go Trainium. And, uh, and I'll see you soon with more video, okay? Until then, keep rocking.